Hello, I'm Bill Kinney. This is video number 25 in my series on the foundations of arithmetic, algebra, and graphing. It's part four of a sub-series on decimals, real numbers, and percentages with an emphasis on calculator usage. I don't know if you've noticed, if you've been watching these videos uh, to this point, that I, I, have, I've, I have focused more on ideas than calculations, uh, than methods and algorithms. Uh, but in this video I'm going to take a detour and I am going to focus on a particular method that you might recall from, oh I don't know, maybe about fifth or sixth grade or something, to, um, to understand, to start off with at least, why 1 16th is 0 0.0625 as a decimal. Uh, and that's to do long division. Now how I would justify 1 16th being 0 0.0625 to this point would be to notice that, um, well, this takes a little experimentation, there is a multiple of 10, a power of 10 in fact, 10,000, that 16 divides evenly into. That, that takes a little bit of experimentation to, to see though. It ends up being that 10,000 divided by 16, you can check this on your calculator, is 625. And because of that, uh, and because of the fact that we can think of 1 16th as 1 over 10,000 times 10,000 over 16, where this is 1 10,000th and 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, um, and this is 625, that we can, then that means what we do is we, we move the decimal place to the, um, on the 625 here, to the right, or to the left, excuse me, uh, four places. Thinking of 625 as 625.0, move it to the left four places to ultimately get this product to be 0 0.0625. That is the basis for the long division method. Well, let's go ahead and do 1 16th as a long division. Put the 1 there, put the 16, what you're dividing by out there. And think of 1 as 1.000, etc. As many zeros as you might need. You put the decimal directly above uh, the other decimal there. And then you sort of ignore it except for the place value. 16 doesn't go into 1. Doesn't go into 10. So because it doesn't go into 1, you put a 0 here. Because it doesn't go into 10, you put a 0 there. But it does go into 100. How many times? Let's do a little bit of guesswork. Uh, it goes in six times with a certain remainder. What is 16 times 6? Uh, you can do that in your head. I, here's how I do it in my head. Uh, 16 times 2 is 32. And then I've got to multiply 32 by 3 to get 16 times 6. And 32 times 3 is 96. So again, ignoring the decimal and thinking of that as 100, and this is a 96, 100 minus 96 is 4. Then I'd bring down that 0. 16 goes into 40 twice. 2 times 16 is 32. Subtract to get an 8. Bring down this 0. Write it as an 80 there. 16 goes into 80 five times with a remainder of 0. And that means you can stop. So there's a long division justification of why 1 16th is the same as 0 0.0625. Wanted to do that, uh, partially just to remind you that you can do it, and partially because I want to show you that you can use it to see that 1 third is 0.3 repeating, at least if you believe the method would go on forever and ever. If I take 1 and divide it by 3, let the zeros for the 1 go on forever and ever. Put the decimal up there directly above that one. 3 doesn't go into a 1, so I have a 0 in front of the decimal. 3 does go into 10 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. Bring down that 0. I get another 10. 3 goes into 10 3 times. Put the 3 up there. 3 times 3 is 9, 10 minus 9 is 1, bring down that 0, you can see the pattern is going to go on forever and ever. So, 
that means that the threes are going to go on forever and ever and ultimately means one-third has a decimal representation of 0 0.3 repeating the threes go on forever and ever. How do you give meaning to that? A couple different ways you can do it. Um, one way is to go back to the you know, the place value interpretation of these di digits. 0.3 going on forever means, well, you've got a 3 in the 10th spot, a 3 times 1 tenth, plus a 3 in the 100th, the 100th spot, so you have 3 times 1 over 100, plus a 3 in the 1,000th spot, so you have 3 times 1 over 1,000, etc. And I guess that sum has to go on forever if these threes go on forever. Maybe that's not very satisfying to you because it's we're, we're sort of replacing one infinite process with another infinite process. Can we really add up infinitely many numbers? That's that's kind of a mysterious thing. I don't know if there's any complete interpretation of this that's not somewhat mysterious. Here's another interpretation of it. Imagine a number line. One third is going to be right about, if I imagine breaking this up into three even pieces, perhaps right about there. That'll be one third. Point three repeating. I'll write it with a bar there. What does that mean? What does it mean to be at a point on a number line whose uh, coordinate, if you will, is point three repeating? Well, take it in steps. Point 0.3 itself might be right about there. That's 3 tenths and would be, say, right about there. All right. Um, what about 0.33? That might be right about there. And what does 0.33 represent? It represents 33 hundredths, 33 over 100. Keep going. How about 0.333? My drawing's getting a little cramped here. Might be right about there. Same as 333 over 1,000. And I could keep doing that process. In fact, I could even imagine zooming in on this picture, like you've got a microscope. Zoom in on this picture as if you've got a microscope what would it look like? So I've kind of expanded my picture. Maybe this is 0.3 now, and this is, well, 0 0.4. 0 0.33 might be right there, then 0 0.333 then 0.3333, etc. And 0.3 repeating might be right there. These numbers where you keep adding one more 3 and stop keep getting closer and closer to 0.3 repeating though they never quite reach it. That's another way you can try to visually imagine what point three repeating means. To finish this video, I want to show you another common decimal that involve that's a repeating decimal, and this time we'll just do it with a calculator. This one's harder to remember. The digits seem kind of random. I would encourage you to try using long division to uh, verify this on your own. Um, if you do it on a calculator here, what I'm thinking of is one seventh, one divided by seven. Here's how my calculator represents it. That, that is an approximation. It's not exactly equal to this. It's an approximation. If you write it out by hand, we'll start writing the digits, 0.142857, after that point they repeat, 142857, one four two eight five seven and that pattern keeps going forever and ever you can check that with long division I, again I would encourage you to try that
you'll see that pattern continuing forever. With the bar notation, we'd write that as 0.142857 with a bar over that entire part there. It's another common fraction uh, that, well, you, you know, you probably don't have to remember the, the whole thing, but it probably would be good to remember. I typically try to remember that 1 7th is about 0.143 or as a percentage 14.3%. That's something that I typically try to remember. Um, but in an exact form, it's an infinite decimal. It has a repeating pattern to it. It's more than just an infinite decimal. It's an infinite decimal that's got a repeating pattern.